What do we oh, do yeah. with our hands? We're in. We're in now. We're in now. Everybody shut up. We're going to put your hands on the transitions. Now we're on the screen. <laughs> Hello. Oh, <no. laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, joining us. Uh, I'm Jared Sleeper. And to, to, I think, the right of me is Zeke Thomas. Yeah. What's going on, guys? Zeke Thomas. Uh, we are the writer, creators, producers, all the things of Karate City. And we're super excited to, uh, t- to share this live Zoom table read with you guys. And... Um, yeah, Jared. I mean, what what more can we say about Karate City? It's it's been a little bit of an adventure, and uh, it's just you know this is our current incarnation given uh, the situations we're in. Yeah, yeah. This is the first time we've tried this. We got some great live scoring going on with Jason Scardamalia. Uh, thank you so much, Jason, for being here. We this is we're trying to push the boundaries of how Zoom works. So bear with us through anything technical, but I think it'll be fun. Thanks for joining us. I don't think we need to say much more, right? It's I will silly... say this. I, I will say this. I will say that uh, this is the first of our initiative called Pilot Light, where you we bring your pilots to life via Zoom theater, if you will. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to be learning a lot as far as tech goes over this this uh, this episode, this if you will. And we're hoping to do this again every two to three weeks with a new piece of, uh, with a new pilot that hasn't been produced. Great. All right. Well, great. Without further ado, I'm going to play the opening credits of the show. And oh, just so my cast knows, I probably oh, should let's, let's introduce our cast. Jared. Oh, yeah, okay. And just well, let me just say this also. Yeah, like yeah, I said, this is the audio. Look, I'm not that smart. So you guys in the cast don't talk during the credits because they'll hear you. Okay. Just so you know, <laughs> it's like it is like live theater. All right. That feels like something you should have brought up before. <laughs> well, yeah, it is, but I didn't yeah, remember it till now. And you well, know, no, we're, this, you see now, the magic so happen, baby. Like, it's the internet. Okay. About this in the lead up. Yeah. Well, that's true. But whatever. I have mental problems. All right. Do, what do we say? You introducing everybody, Zeke? No, they're going to be introduced. You guys will get introduced them in the credits, and then Great, we'll talk about it go. at the end. All right. I love you all. Thank you. <laughs> Let's do I'm very thing. thrilled. All right. We're, tr- we're doing this. Okay, bye. In a world where guns were never invented, crime still exists. The police officers of Karate City stand between the law-abiding citizenry and a world of crime with nothing but very, their fists, well their feet, and each other. We're in. Brent, that's you. Oh, uh, yeah. We're in is vague. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. <laughs> okay, now we're in. <clears throat> All right. Now we're <laughs> cold open. Exterior, Sun Tzu Judo High School Gym, night. Hot scents. Cold moonlight. Sun Tzu Judo High School, home of the warlords, should be asleep. But the gymnasium is wide awake. The parking lot is packed with flashy cars. Mysterious steam billows from the gym. Super Karate City, USA. Interior, Sun Tzu Judo High School gym continuous. A hood is ripped off to reveal Dirk Murdoch, tied to a chair. He's a hot-headed five-and-a-half-foot rage machine in his 30s. And not to mention one of the best damn cops in Karate City. His pastel-colored suit is blood-stained and torn. Before him stands Zabka, a jacked judo master in his 50s, wearing a sleeveless gi. Zabka throws a handful of hijo powder in his own face, violently snorting it. Ah! Ah! Eject the Zerk Murdoch! 
You know why I brought you here? To give you one last chance. Dirk surveys his surroundings. Zabka has converted this high school gym into a drug lab. Judokas, judo fighters, for those outside of the martial arts world, package a green powder called hijo into bricks. They are stamped with a laughing Japanese demon face. <laughs> you know why everybody loves hijo? Because it makes you feel good, strong, here like you're a rhino from outer space. That's why so many of your brothers in blue do it, Dirk. They like to feel strong. You like to feel strong, Dirk Murdoch? Dirk remains stoic. His steely gaze could crack rocks. What's it gonna be, samurai? Zabka holds a pipe packed with hijo in front of Dirk's lips. Die? Or you gonna finally woof those jam rods? Dirk spits in Zabka's face. It drips. I'd rather go out on my shield. Zabka chuckles. He takes a deep inhale of the hijo pipe. <laughs> I'm sorry you feel that way. Cerberus. Cerberus, 30s, a quiet storm encased in a man, has been lurking nearby the entire time. Kill this cop, Cerberus. Kill him bad. Cerberus nods as Zabka leaves Dirk to oversee Hijo production. Cerberus approaches Dirk like a panther. Dirk's expression barely wavers as he prepares for death. Cerberus towers over Dirk, the guillotine about to fall. When I let you loose, you're gonna be ready to roll these jackals. You're on the job. Federal agent. Let's burn this barn down to the studs. <laughs> What's going on over there? Why's this cop's blood still in his body, Cerberus? Dirk pops up from the chair, free of his bonds. He and Cerberus strike a fighting stance. Karate City Police Department, you're under arrest. Cerberus, this is some kind of joke. You're all under arrest. You heard the officer, coach. I've been undercover this entire time. Sure, Cerberus. You've been undercover as a high school student for three years. 39 months, 11 days, and 15 and a half hours. But who's counting? No! Zabka begins trashing his own lab in a hijo-induced mania. A Bunsen burner gets knocked over and starts a fire. I killed for you! You killed for me! I treated you like my own son. I loved you. Kill the traitor! Kill them both! Kill the pieces! The small army of judokas engage with Dirk and Cerberus, and it is brutal. Fists, feet, head, knees, elbows crunch and crack bones. Bodies go flying, joints bend the wrong way, and pristine white geese are stained with bright crimson blood. In his rage, Zabka rips a gas line that begins spewing aerosolized fuel into the gym. Dirk and Cerberus fight in perfect concert. Demolished judokas litter the gym. Pretty good for a fed. Let's finish this. Dirk and Cerberus close on Zabka. He is powerful, smashing brick walls with his hijo-fueled fighting style, but the drugs make him reckless. The pair quickly grounds and cuffs him. Dirk sniffs and stops, dead in his tracks. Wait, do you smell that? I smell it. You smell it, Cerberus? It's the smell of betrayal. He cut the gas line! We gotta get out of... <laughs> Exterior, Sun Tzu Judo High School gym, continuous. A fireball consumes the roof of the gym. Windows blow out as debris scatters everywhere. Exterior, high school gym, moments later, sirens blare as KCPD cop cars and fire engines screech to a halt before the burning gym. Lieutenant Arrow Harden, early 40s, good looking like a Bible salesman, scrambles out of his car in disbelief. Officer Jareth Crouch gets out of the other side of the vehicle. He's a sandpapery, kind, not too um, thinky fellow in his 30s, rapidly take, taking in the fire-choked scene. 
Wait, is that Detective Murdoch? It is Detective Murdoch. He is charred, limping from the flames with a barely conscious Cerberus on his back. Dirk lays him on the cold asphalt. You gonna be okay? Thanks to you, Kimasabe. I owe you one. Just returning the favor, senpai. They grasp fists as only brothers in combat can. Murdoch! What the hell is going on? Did you explode that high school gymnasium? You know what I did? I shut down a drug lab, put away a crime lord for good, and saved the life of a federal agent. What did you do today, Lieutenant? Murdoch, you're a menace. Turn in your badge and belt. You're suspended. Dirk drops his black belt. He rips his badge off his neck and whips it like a throwing star, narrowly missing Harden. It thunks into the side of Harden's vehicle. Great. I could use a vacation anyways. Despite it being the middle of the night, Dirk puts on his mirrored aviators and walks away as the high school gym burns behind him. End of cold open. Act 1. Exterior, Karate City Police Department, parking lot, morning. Tucked in among neon supercars, tricked out 4x4s, and KCPD squad cars is a pristine white Volkswagen Cabriolet. Rookie detective Karen Recker, 20s, backbone of steel but doesn't know it, sits alone inside. Interior, Recker's Cabriolet, continuous. Hanging from the rearview mirror is a wallet-sized portrait of Recker's late father in his KCPD dress blues. A rosary hangs alongside it. Well, here I am, Karate City Central Division. Best of the best. It's me, who barely put a job in my entire career at Rock City. I hope you're still watching over me, because I know I'm going to need some help. Love you, Dad. She heads towards the station with a pep in her step. Interior, Karate City Police Department, moments later. Wrecker, expecting the hustle and bustle of an active police station, finds the bullpen oddly quiet, the lights dimmed. Sergeant Marjorie Tuggy Downs, career cop, physically and spiritually ham-fisted, pops up and shouts at her. Get out of the way! You're gonna ruin the surprise. Uh, um, I- uh... Don't just stand there! Hide! Wrecker hastily finds a newspaper and tries to blend in with the wall. Exterior, Karate City Police Department continuous. A pink Lamborghini Countach with an ornate Chinese dragon painted on the hood screeches to a halt in front of the same doors Wrecker just hustled through. Pink alligator loafers touch the pavement outside the car. A glistening platinum bracelet with the words, like water, hang from a thick, hairy wrist. The mirrored aviator shades of Dirk Murdoch sit atop a luxurious but tasteful mustache. He gazes upon the station and allows himself the barest smile. It's good to be home. He tosses his keys over his shoulder without looking, and they land right in the hand of an approaching uniform cop, who nonetheless fumbles to hang on to them. Hey, no paint sealer. Yes on the rust inhibitor. Make sure to double coat the underbody and go with the hot carnauba wax. I like Yes, smooth. sir! Interior, Karate City Police Department, continuous. Dirk walks into the station and senses something is off. He stops just before entering the bullpen area. His eyes narrow in detection mode. He relaxes and walks through over the threshold casually before suddenly lashing out to his left. Wrecker yelps as Dirk's hand stops a fraction of an inch before obliterating her trachea. Um, surprise? The entire bullpen of previously hidden cops erupts behind them as all the lights turn on. Surprise! surprise! They bring out a cake that says, welcome back, Dirk. How was vacation, you old pit viper? <laughs> <laughs> Great for me, but my Johnson didn't get much R&R. &R. <laughs> Everyone laughs. Wrecker cautiously starts to join in. Dirk casts a dark glare back at her in her direction. Don't ever stand in my kill zone again. Blow out your candles already. It's an ice cream cake. What's going on out here? Uh, morning, Lieutenant. We were just having a little welcome back for Detective Murdoch here. Welcome back from... What was it again? Oh, yes, administrative suspension for 37 million in property damage, 23 extrajudicial fatalities, and the endangering of countless civilian lives in a residential neighborhood? Doesn't sound like much to celebrate to me. Don't you all have a briefing room to be in? All right, you heard the lieutenant. Briefing room in two, boys and girls. 
The crowd grumbles and disperses. Harden beelines for Murdoch and gets right in his face. You got anything to say to me? <laughs> Just that you seem to be confusing me with the criminals I put away. But what else is new? You're a goddamn liability, Murdoch. We cut away here and throughout the scene to see a mysterious figure practicing kung fu on a wooden dummy. He strikes the dummy with increasing aggression and percussion to match the heightening tension of Harden chewing out Dirk. But I wouldn't expect different from someone with your family history. If it were up to me, I wouldn't put you on leave. I'd put you in prison. You're right. You're right. My family is a bunch of criminals. But growing up around drug dealers it w is what makes me so good at busting them. Lieutenant Hardon. It's Lieutenant Hardin. <laughs> My bad, Lieutenant. I'm sure it won't happen again. See that it doesn't. Briefing room. Now. It goes for you and your new partner. Partner? <laughs> Come on. You know I work best alone. Not anymore, Kimasabe. That mysterious figure we saw working the kung fu dummy throughout the scene now stands in the bullpen. He is none other than the undercover federal agent Cerberus, who fought alongside Dirk at the Hijo bust. Now, working in the civilian sector, he, go, he goes by his real name. The name's Rick Hard. You saved my life. Hopefully, I get to return the favor. Interior, Karate City Police Department, briefing room. Wrecker sits alone at the back of the room as Tuggy calls out assignments for the day. The cops here are as diverse as the city they serve and protect. Individuals of every race, nationality, and gender. All the officers sport the trademark blue geese of KCPD and standard issue handcuffs, brass knuckles, and throwing stars. The only thing they have in common is that they're the best of the best, working the toughest beats in the toughest city. Rick and Dirk enter the room. Ah, oh, welcome, gentlemen. We were just finishing up here. Crouch, Styles, werewolves are beefing with the plague over illegal katana smuggling. See if you can't do something to quash that turf war before it spills over into the marina. Uh, Ziggy, Barnes, some new kind of toxic vape seems to be thrashing all the cloud boys and little Kowloon. See what you can find out. And Rupt, Twaddle, you're on compliance. The room reacts playfully to Rupt and Twaddle, pulling the most head bashy weekly detail. Okami? Hard style. <laughs> and finally, Murdoch and Hart. Protection detail for the Korean ambassador. He's in town for the G9 Trade Summit, and the lieutenant, in his infinite wisdom, volunteered us as security. <laughs> Welcome back. What the hell? We're cops. We're not bodyguards. You're also you know... being assigned rookie transfer Karen Wrecker as the third member of your squad. You'll be in charge of showing her the ropes. Oh, a training mission? Really? You can't be serious. This, the city is drowning in hedro-related crime, and the Zabka cartel is still out there you know what, doing their thing. The VIPs touch down in an hour. Let's stay safe out there and break it down. Central on three, okay? One, two, three. Central. Central. Wrecker, stunned by how fast things are moving, raises her hand. Um, excuse me, sorry. I don't mean to be annoying, but I don't have any idea what's going on here. It's my first day, you get it. Isn't there like an orientation or something, some paperwork or? You want Anything? an orientation? Uh-oh. Here we go. <laughs> I'll give you an orientation. Try to keep up. Dirk kicks open the door back to the main station and starts walking. I'd keep up if I was you, kid. Interior, Karate City Police Department, various. Dirk walks and talks as Wrecker struggles to take in what he's saying. Over there's the kitchen. Over there's the locker room. That's where you eat, and that's where you shit. Don't mix them up. Wrecker opens her mouth to ask a question. I know you're about to open your mouth to ask a goddamn question, but listen to me when I tell you those are the only two places you need to know about. This is central. The cops here are street cops. If you need any more orientation than that, then I got news for you, kid. You're not a street cop. You're a TV cop. Go someplace else. What's a TV cop? As they walk and talk, Dirk and Wrecker pass the station's holding cells, where a few representatives of Karate City's notorious gangs languish. This is our first glimpse at what KCPD officers deal with daily, and it's scary. 
A scar pimp leers from under his powdered wig and rosy cheeks. A goon whistles through a grin you only get from a life of hockey-style fisticuffs. One of the milkmen tips his hat. A TV cop won't be at the bust, but he'll be on the news talking about the bust. A TV cop won't be at the hospital visiting victims, but he'll have his picture taken at the fundraiser for them. A TV cop won't be rumbling yobos, outfisted three to one in some godforsaken alleyway, but you can be damn sure he'll be at the press conference calling Tiger Claws excessive force. Well, aren't they? Well, maybe out in Candyland with your gumdrop gangs and your liquor store robberies, but you're in Karate City now. How long you been on the job? 26 months before I got the call. <laughs> Two years. And how many times you been on TV? Seven. I can just see it now. You standing proudly by a couple grams of hijo, uh, a careful handful of throwing stars, feeling like you brought down the Zabka cartel. Dirk leans in real close to Wrecker. TV cop. This cuts record deep. And that's okay. The world needs TV cops. Needs pretty faces to cover up an ugly world. You can work the next 30 years and have a nice little career as a TV cop. Or you can cut it up with the street cops. No one ever says thank you. And you'll probably die on the bricks you walk on every day. But pick one or the other. Because you can't be both. Dirk turns and kicks the doors open to the parking lot, leaving Wrecker behind. Well, what's it going to be, Rook? You a TV cop? Or you a street cop? Wrecker breathes deep. A vision of her dad appears. You got it, little Brecker. Remember, the brick is hard, but your spirit is harder. The vision of Wrecker's dad evaporates. Let's hit the streets. End of Act 1. Act 2. Interior, Karate City Convention Center. Auditorium, day. Ursula, Ursula, 40s stands at the podium with the assistance of a futuristic exoskeleton wheelchair. She's paralyzed from the waist down and speaks with a thick Germanic accent to the assembled crowd of visiting dignitaries. Welcome everyone to the 23rd annual G9 International Trade Summit. On behalf of Karate City, we welcome our friends from all around the world and appreciate that you have made Karate City your gateway to the American land. Standing in the wings on opposite sides of the stage are Dirk and Wrecker. Rick surveys the scene from above in the balcony. Ursula continues her speech as Rick, Dirk, and Wrecker talk over walkies. You clocking all of this, Wrecker? Absolutely. Exits are clear. No weapons in sight. Negative, Wrecker. The weapons here are the words. What? Look around. Do these look like? Upstanding businessmen to you. Insert shots of extremely criminal looking billionaire business people from around the world sitting in the audience as Ursula name checks them. Saudi Arabia, East Germany, Palo Alto, and many, many more. Wrecker's eyes widen as she realizes what Rick is implying. Rick's attention is drawn to a tall blonde man who stands to leave the auditorium. Rick notices the blonde man's neck tattoo partially visible from under his collar. The symbol's familiar, but Rick can't place it. <sighs> Over the course of the next three days, we hope to strengthen our ties and make Karate City the most business-friendly port city in the world. Ursula, impossibly, finds Rick up in the balcony and makes eye contact with him for her final line. The riches we've made thus far pale in comparison to the wealth which lies before us. Ursula winks at Rick as the crowd applauds. Dirk chimes in over the walkie. Let's grab the VIPs. Get the hell out of here. Interior, Korean spa entryway later that night. Rick, Dirk, and Wrecker escort Ambassador Zhang, 50s, leader of the South Korean dele delegation, along with his retinue of VIPs. They walk and talk through the long hall to the front desk. It's an honor to provide you protection, Mr. Ambassador. It is an honor to be so protected. I would expect nothing less from the Karate City Police Department. There have been many credible threats against my delegation. Wrecker interjects with the response in perfect Korean. 
We're well aware, Mr. Ambassador, and have taken every precaution to make sure that you'll enjoy this small piece of home in complete safety and security. The Prime Minister nods in appreciation and heads towards the front desk. Could there be more to this Candyland cop than meets the eye? Dirk scoffs and follows the delegation. Interior Korean spa front desk continuous. A gong sounds as the front desk manager and a spa worker greet everyone. Welcome, Mr. Ambassador. It's an honor to have you and your guests spend time with us. We could all use a good steam after the tense negotiations today. Ambassador Zhang smiles and begins removing his clothing. The rest of his entourage does the same, as do Rick and Dirk. They stand there naked, waiting for Wrecker to remove her clothes. Wrecker is confused. There's suddenly a lot of nudity. Wrecker, don't be rude. Ah, has the lady cop never been to a Korean spa before? Uh, I... <clears throat> it is customary that one removes all clothing so that one does not bring co outside contamination into the spa. It's all right, Mr. Ambassador. Detective Hart and I have you covered. Uh, perhaps this lady cop doesn't have the balls for this job. <laughs> they share a bit of a boys club <laughs> chuckle. Not so fast, boys. Rick, Dirk, and the ambassador turn around to find a naked wrecker confidently striking a pose. I may be nude to this, but I'm a fast learner. Wrecker brushes past them to take point. Try and keep up. Wrecker leads the way to the steam room with confidence, revealing her very 80s one-piece thong tan line. Rick, Dirk, and Ambassador Zhang pick their, pick their jaws up off the floor and follow her, revealing their own thong tan lines. As they leave the frame, the camera pans over to reveal the front desk manager picking up the phone. The ambassador has arrived. And the other VIPs? Yes, they've been steaming for some time. Excellent. Let them get uh, settled and then begin phase one. Ja, hold mein Herr. The front desk manager hangs up the phone and his hand moves to press a button labeled gas. Interior Korean spa central bathing area moments later. The ambassador and the VIPs relax in a sauna. Just outside, Rick, Dirk, and Wrecker sit in a bubbling hot tub. They all take a moment to exhale and luxuriate in the very uh, naked surroundings. I still hate bodyguard work. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> How you doing, Rook? Best first day on the job ever. <laughs> They laugh together. <laughs> ah, bonding. Insert shot. The vents start pouring a strange gas into the room. Hey guys, does it smell like waffles to you? Sure does. That's a nice touch. Rick's eyes widen as he sees the steam filling up the room at an alarming rate. Stop breathing! Stop breathing! It's gas! Stop breathing! It's too late for Wrecker as she nods off. Dirk attempts to fight through it. If, if you don't like the smell, like don't gargle with the pizza. The gas overtakes Dirk as Rick ducks his head underwater. The door to the spa is kicked open by a team of terrorists pouring in wearing gas masks. They place a thick chain around the sauna door, locking the ambassador and the VIPs inside. The steam begins to dissipate as a terrorist leader emerges with a partially visible neck tattoo. He removes his mask and we see it's the same blonde man who Rick had clocked earlier at the trade summit. His name, Carl Blauer. The front desk manager from earlier stands beside Blauer with a giant sat phone. Blauer addresses the other terrorists. Begin phase two. I will make our demands. And the detectives? Those you like. The front desk manager grins and leaves. Blauer dials the giant satellite phone. Hey, CPD Central, what's your emergency fee? Get me Lieutenant Harden on the phone. I've taken over the Korean spa and I have some demands. I am a terrorist. Interior Korean spa massage room. Dirk and Wrecker groggily awake, discovering that they're each tied to a massage table with four-point restraints. Still naked. 
The front desk manager stands over them with two henchmen standing guard. Oh, look who's awake. Welcome back to the world of the living. <laughs> At least for now. Dirk and Wrecker test their bonds, but they're not going anywhere. When I first blossomed, I found my instinctive desires were more complex than other adolescents. The front desk manager raises a scalpel and gazes upon it lovingly. Wrecker fearfully eyes the scalpel blade above her, but we rack focus and see the eyes of Rick peeking out from a ventilation unit above them. Rick silently raises a finger to his lips, signaling for Wrecker to not spoil the ambush. Wrecker imperceptibly nods. For instance, your nudity does not arouse me. However, the way that your genitals shrivel at the cold touch of my scalpel. The front desk manager delicately kisses the blade to Dirk's legs. A shudder runs through his body. As a people's pain is the only way that I can orgasm. Good for me and <laughs> bad for you. <laughs> Suddenly we hear the crack crack sound of a neck breaking. The front desk manager whips to see Rick Hart easily killing the first and then the second henchman standing guard. That's impossible! You are in the gas for one quarter hour! In the war, my record free dive was 17 minutes. 15 was easy. I see. And what do you plan to do now, Mr. Policeman? Before I kill your friends, of course. I'm gonna kick you in the throat. You'll die choking on your own Nazi neck. <laughs> From 14 feet away, with a knife to your partner's jugular, and just exactly how do you plan to Rick do- Rick suddenly <laughs> springs forward and does exactly what he said he was gonna do. The front desk <clears throat> manager goes down, dying. Like that. Rick releases his partners from their restraints as the front desk manager continues choking to death. Well, he sure did not see that coming. <laughs> Goose steppers break easy. <laughs> Looks like we're even now, senpai. The first of many, Kimo Sabe. Let's go guard some bodies. Inner cut between interior Korean spa central bathing area and Karate City Police Department. Flower continues his call with Lieutenant Harden. At 747 with a full bar, a 10 ton truck with a week's worth of food, a Bell 222 helicopter with all this Shanghai 7 and at least one. Loaded rocket pad. Yes, yes, yes. Whatever you want, we're here to help. Yes, yes. Blower Good. grins at this pushover, but his mirth is interrupted. Karate City Police Department. Everybody remain calm. Rick, Dirk, and Wrecker have burst into the main room of the spa, all striking, intimidating fighting postures. They're still quite nude. What the? What's going on over there? Did someone say Karate City Police Department? Blower ignores Harden as he focuses on the threat standing in front of him. Detectives, you have escaped. Excellent. To be honest, I was disappointed. This, uh, this was going all too smoothly, frankly. Is that Murdoch and Hart? Tell them to stand down! Your lieutenant says to stand down. <laughs> You tell him we don't take orders from terrorists. God damn it, Murdoch! I've got this under control! Stand down! I'm afraid it is too late for that. So much for the hostages. Attack! Blower signals his henchmen. Click. The call in ends abruptly, leaving Harden fuming. God damn it! Harden turns furiously Attack! to the rest of the Watch station. Me! Don't just stand there! Roll out! Skids up! Let's move! Interior Korean spa, central bathing area moments later. Dirk and Wrecker are in the middle of a crazy karate fight. All in the nude on the slick tile of a Korean spa. Goddamn terrorists! We're running out of time! They jacked up the temp and locked the VIPs in the sauna. They won't last much longer! If we can't bust them out soon, we're gonna have a real bad Korean barbecue on our hands. Ambassador Zhang looks out from the inside of the locked sauna, helpless. He and the other VIP struggle with the handle, but it won't budge. The thermometer on the outside of the door is rising. I got this. Just keep them off me. 
Dirk and Rick both knock out a couple of terrorists and look up to see a dozen more stream men. Easier said than done, Wrecker. What? A couple dozen terrorists suddenly too much for you, Murdoch? Just get that door open! Wrecker focuses her chi and starts punching the chain on the door with loud exclamations of, Kiai! It does nothing. She keeps trying. Uh, any day now, Wrecker! I knew she didn't have what it takes. Wrecker tries to ignore them. She keeps smashing her fists into the chain to no effect. Her strikes become less and less powerful as her knuckles get bloodier and bloodier. Come on! Come on! Come on! But she fails. The ambassador makes eye contact with Wrecker as he passes out, his hand streaking down the steamy porthole on the door. End of act two. Act three, interior Korean spa, main bathing area. Wrecker is all but defeated. The VIPs within the sauna are unconscious and the chain trapping them remains unbroken. Rick and Dirk are exhausted by the intense melee. Hey Dirk, what's that they say about being outnumbered? <laughs> Sheep flock together, lions fight alone. Just a couple of old lions, huh? Yeah, and a whole lot of sheep. Maybe too many sheep. More terrorists close in on the two. They're finished. Wrecker smashes her bloody knuckles one last time against the chain, but it's useless. I just... I can't do it. Wrecker's ghostly father shimmers dreamily before her. I'm sorry, Dad. They're right. Maybe I am just a TV cop. I can't do this. Hey, come on now. Come on now. I called I you called a little you. breaker for a reason, kid. What do we always say? The brick is hard. My spirit is harder. Wrecker's ghost dad disappears. She focuses all of her energy for one Huge, final, shimmering, bloody, knuckled, and still very nude, by the way. Strike. <laughs> the chain explodes into a hundred <sighs> pieces of metal scrap. Rick and Dirk look back in surprise, along with the terrorists that they're fighting. She did it! Inspired by Wrecker's power, Rick and Dirk finish off the last of the terrorist henchmen. <laughs> Wrecker drags the ambassador out of the sauna and gently slaps his face. He's alive! You! You saved us! Lilica saved us! The VIPs cheer. Just doing my job, sir. Blauer re-enters the spa with a slow clap. Very impressive, detectives. You're under arrest, Blauer. Rick, Rick, after all these years, that is how you're going to greet an old friend? Wait, you know this guy? Not on this side of the wall. Thought I recognized you at the summit. Sorry to see you chose this path, Blower. Yes, well, life is all about choices, isn't it? You could choose to try and arrest me, see how that goes, or you could help me open the vault. What? What, what vault? <laughs> Didn't you know? The vault in this spa is home to 640 million in bearer bonds. The Koreans have been funneling money out of Karate City tax-free for years. That's illegal. That's right, Rekka. And we'll deal with them next. But right now, you're still under arrest, Blau. Now, you want to come quiet? Are you trying to get a little crazy? Blower's wingtip shoes capped with adamantium glisten in the light. Very disappointing, Rick. We could have been rich. I will. Do I want to get crazy? You know, I am feeling a little nuts. With one swift move, Blower shows us just what his fancy footwork were specially engineered to do. Oh, crack! Dirk rises on the tile floor, oh. clutching his naked groin. 
Polynesian coconut style. I've learned a few tricks since we last met. You always did have a thing for soft targets. Rick charges and lands a massive overhand right on Blau, but he <laughs> shakes it off. Do not take it personally, Rick. I'm just busting your balls. Blauer fires another oh. massive kick, this time oh. to Rick's testicles. Oof. And just like that, Rick is out of the fight. Wrecker squares off with Blauer as they circle each other. Oh, Zeroki seems a bit testy. So this whole terrorist act was just a distraction. All you cared about was money. <laughs> Beauty and brains, a deadly combination. Perhaps this kitty has claws? Blower's just too fast. He kicks Wrecker right in the groin and she drops. It seems what my master always said holds true. Kicks him in the balls, everyone falls. Wrecker is in obvious pain, but she fights through it to stand back up. I haven't needed balls my whole life. I sure as hell don't need them now. She regains her fighting stance, focuses her chi, and winds up for a massive ball kick of her own. Hey -ya! Her kick lifts Blower off his feet as Wrecker screams and shakes with power. Electric chi runs throughout Blower's body. We see flashes of his skeleton through his skin until he collapses in a smoking heap. Rick and Dirk are impressed and proud. Well, that's one way to get a guy in the sack. <laughs> Rick, you're muted, but it's all right. Oh, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, wait. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> hold on, I got a lot going on here. We're just in a terrible fight. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. That's... Uh, it's an important line, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm we're impressed and proud. Yeah. That's one. All right, so, sorry, let me, let me set it up. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, okay. Would, Set him back up, please. It, it, it's we're just good, we're it's good, a, we're a good. lot of emotional yeah, 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 yeah. story. Rick and Dirk are impressed and proud. Well, that's one way to get a guy in the sack. <laughs> the three of them chuckle together in an exhausted, aw, shucks kind of way as we crossfade to exterior Korean spa parking lot moments later. Sirens blare as a legion of KCPD cop cars and first responders arrive on the scene. Officers pour out of vehicles ready to fight. Harden jumps out of a car and begins to bark orders. Establish a perimeter. Entrances and exits. Barnes, Pell, keep the press at least 200 yards away. Get Wait a minute. What? Is that Detective Murdoch? And Hart? And Wrecker? Dirk, Rick, and Wrecker stagger out of the spa, all clutching their groins. A handcuffed Blower is on Dirk's back. Situation is under control, Lieutenant. Might need some handcuffs inside. Body bags, too. And here's your terrorist. Dirk dumps Blower on the ground. Harden can't believe what he sees. What the hell happened in there? Police work, Lieutenant. You should try it sometime. I, I expect a full report on my desk tomorrow morning. Harden, pissed, stalks off. Tuggy appears with some other cops who wrap the three naked detectives in space blankets. Great work, you three. Especially you, Wrecker. Hell of a first day. Tuggy and her cops rush off to help secure the scene. Hey, Rick. How did you know to hold your breath when we smelled waffles? Oh, back when I was an operator, I was exposed to many aspects of asymmetrical warfare. Let's just say you never forget the smell of Soviet maple gas. I mean, I, 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 I totally agree, Rick. I'm sure Ursula's uh, yeah. right around the corner. Has Absolutely, I, I agree too. Yeah. Uh, it's I'm crazy. Gonna, that, be real. I think Ursula's frozen. I think Ursula, I think is, Ursula uh, might be frozen. Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> like mad still. Yeah. I was uh, like, wait, uh, she's really, she's really damn pretty frozen. There, fuck. Yeah. yeah. Are you talking about Ursula? Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, yeah, I think wait, let's see if she reconnects. Hold on. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
we'll just hang out here. Well, so that, yeah, you did, that was pretty good. Like, that was pretty impressive the way you in were. In a world uh, where we had to like imagine what she did. The way you were fighting and punching. And, and, and anyway, uh, so like I was saying, Soviet then, maple gas. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> So uh, Ur- then, Ursula, if you, then Ursula would say I, she's like, she's returned. Yeah, so what like I was saying about Soviet Mabel gas, you never really forget. Like, you know, you you might be muted, Ursula. Yeah, like if Ursula was here. Yeah. So anyway, Soviet like, Mabel gas. <laughs> like well, you know, just hanging out. <laughs> Ursula rolls up in her high-tech wheelchair, flanked by a couple of beautiful boys that serve as her valets. Welcome back to the fourth murder. Ursula, Ursula, what a surprise. I heard some of our delegates were taken hostage at the spa. As the chairman of the summit, I had a duty to make sure everyone was all right. Dirk throws her some side-eye as Ursula moves on to Rick. In Detective Hart... How has the transition to civilian life? Different battlefields. Same war. Mm. Bye. She turns to Wrecker. But who is this lady cop? I'm Detective Wrecker. Karen Wrecker. Oh, right, yes. You recently transferred from Candyland, yours? Rockland Hills. I'm sorry, but this is an active crime scene. You should probably leave. I just wanted a good, up-close look at the heroes who saved the day. I'm sure we will meet again. <laughs> I hope not. Really, hope will float. Every day would be a parade. Come along, boys. Ursula and the beautiful boys turn. As she's wheeling away, she taunts the cops over her shoulder. My associates and I are grateful. Ta ta! Officers, until next time. Ursula leaves. Who was that? That. That was a problem for another day, Rekka. A problem for another day. Rick starts to go. See you two at the Blue Belt tonight. What's the Blue Belt? Local watering hole. Street cops only. We'll be playing a show. Uh, best way to unwind after a tough day on the job. I'll be there. Dirk looks over to Wrecker, then back at Rick. We'll both be there. Rick smiles and leaves. <laughs> Dirk starts to walk away, leaving Wrecker alone. But Wrecker calls after him. I thought I was just a TV cop. Dirk stops and turns around. You were... End of Act 3. Tags. Interior, the blue belt, later that night. Rick sings 12 bar bar blues with a full band. Let's go. The world is a hot pile full of all kinds of drugs and murder and crime. Most people tell you sorry, buddy. Hold the line. Woo. You know we do, so raise up and raise them high to those who have lived and those who have died. Karate City PD. Rick holds a small sake cup high above his head, and the crowd of police joins him. <sighs> Karate City! Karate City PD! Drink up, baby! The crowd cheers as they all down their glasses. Hold the line! End of episode. Duh! No, no, good job. <laughs> all right. Wow. There it is, we guys. Did it. I'm surprised. We- not- Thank you all. Thank you all. Let's do, oh, wait, hold on, wait, hold on. Let me put a shirt vaguely on. Not that it really makes a difference. Okay. 
Uh, well, now that we're out of the Korean spa, you know. <laughs> okay, gotta, uh, this is curtain call. Okay, yeah, yeah all yeah. right, all right. Let me say first, first over here, uh, uh, Zeke Rodriguez Thomas. Thank you so much, Zeke Rodriguez Thomas. Think about. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Okay, okay. And right next to me, of course, okay, is Jared, Jared Sleeper. Oh, thank you, thank, thank, you, thank you, you, you. Okay, I'm gonna go on my screen because I'm the ones that are seeing. Uh, playing uh, the evil Blower, Tom Antonellis. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Fucking crushed it. Over there, we got uh, playing the the terrible, just obnoxious <laughs> Lieutenant Harden, Scott White. Thank you, Scott White. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Uh, of course, then moving down to the next, we have our rookie detective, Ka Karen Wrecker, played by Monica Joy Sharer. Thank you, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Philip Wilburn, of course, playing the insane Zabko. Really wonderful. Oh, that wasn't his real hair. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> what? <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, and then J Jason Scardamalia on the ones and twos tickling the ivories. Holy <laughs> shit. Thank you. And putting that I'd song score, everybody. Wow. Insane. Lot and crazy. We have both Robert Mitchell and Carly Kaiser together in one place, not socially distancing. It's okay. They live together. Thank you guys playing a variety of roles, especially <laughs> Lieutenant Tuggy Downs. Thank you. And then we got, <laughs> this is your real hair, I think. Jordan Sudak, of course, playing the front desk manager with uh, proclivities. Ooh, well done. Well done. Thank you, thank you, Jordan. Uh, Peter J, thank you so much hopping in at the last minute to join us as the ambassador. Crushing that. Thank you. Of course, Brett Coble, narration, keeping us on track, keeping the whole story together. Beautiful, beautiful. And finally, of course, the, the mysterious Ursula, Ursula, who has her own things going on. <laughs> Always pulling the strings behind the scene. Lee Newton, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. So beautiful. Reprising her role from the yeah. original short. Guys, thank you guys so fucking much. That was really fun. And I'm surprised we had like minimal, pretty minimal, uh, Technical issues. I considering, considering, considering oh, you know. Apologies. It literally was like, bye. I'm like, no. <laughs> not now. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm psyched to see this chat that's been active the whole time. Thank you guys so much for fucking being here. Uh, can't wait to look through that and like see it. Uh, this is so fun. If you did enjoy this, um, Zeke and I will stick around. Anybody who has to go can go. I figured we thought we'd do like a little, but anybody wants to stay too because you can ask questions of these people. We'll do a little Q&A if anybody feels like Q&Aing in there. There's like a, a little bevy of y'all there. And um, so just start, there's a little delay. So while you're asking questions, uh, if you want to, I'll keep looking there. Um, oh. Then what else? I was going to say, if you did like this, we're planning to try to do more. Uh, we're, we're calling it Pilot Light. Like you're your pilot that you love with none of the calories or nutrition. <laughs> so um, <laughs> if you want to, uh, you know, be involved in this, like maybe if you have a script or something like that, um, you can send it to us. At, what's the MindJam account? Uh, you know what? You can send it to either Zeke at MindJamMedia.com or Jarrett at MindJamMedia.com. Yes. Just write pilot light in the, uh, in the, you know, what's it called? The subject line? Sure. Um, uh, because we, we're hoping to do it like, Semi-regularly. We think a lot of our friends in L.A. have hidden scripts that they haven't been well, produced. We, we know a lot of our friends have amazing scripts that haven't <laughs> been produced. So now this is the opportunity and like we can't perform live, like no yeah. stand up, you know, no sketch. So it's like, let's find a way to work within the constraints. Um, but yeah, people are just saying do more, basically, which is really nice. A bunch <laughs> of people are really into it in the chat, which is so cool. Uh, I don't think uh, but I think whatever. I don't know what questions there would be. This is great. This is fun. We're, I, I don't know. Thank you guys. This is like I, this has been the most happy I've been in a, in a while. Just like <laughs> with this thing to do, you know, we've all been quarantined. I was like, are we ever going to perform again? Are we going to act? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And guys, thank you. Uh, we threw this together in less than two weeks and all these amazing, all, all of our amazing friends stepped right up to do this. And uh, I don't know. I'm just really happy. Everyone was just like willing to, to drop in and come do this when Jarrett yeah. and I had an idea and we were like, let's give ourselves a deadline and make it happen. So I just want to thank you guys again for yes. indulging us uh, for our little crazy world that we call Karate City. Also, uh, somebody so did ask before, in right? the chat, uh, somebody totally random, not in involved with this at all, uh, what if I wrote something and I'm shy and I don't want to read and I don't know actors? Well, we ha yes, of course. We Look well, at look at these fucking know, people. You know <laughs> look at all these maniacs. We'd love to do this <laughs> exactly. again. So if you have something and you want to send it, Wow. It's Send it out. We'll, we'll put it together. We'll bring my idea to reality. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. You should figure out how to monetize this idea because this is a hard sell for something that's just like, it's Friday night.
Yeah. yeah right? I mean, also, <laughs> likewise, if you do have actors or, like, you wrote something and you're, like, absolutely will, like, you guys can hop in, too. We're not going to be like, you yeah, have we'll, to be we'll our people, you know? We just want to make these stories keep happening. This is fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see if anybody else. Cool. Everyone's just early. saying I nice stuff. The whole thing it was awesome. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, Phil got to hang out. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Uh, virtual cool. show people love. Just people are saying really nice stuff. This is the future. Do more. <laughs> Let me get that background. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jared, should we uh, make some of these backgrounds available for people to download? You know. Yeah, maybe, for I mean, well, I just the, honestly, uh, I don't. Know if, I just got them off Google Image Search, so I don't know <laughs> <laughs> that I would uh, not. Let's not talk about it anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I got like a, like a some. Yeah, make. I, I've got the official one. Might just yeah. make official ones. Yeah, we all. I will make official. We can. Have, you can have official ones. I, I. They are off some. I think they're free. They're off some background site. Um, someone yeah. said, "Are you trying to sell the pilot? Are you going to shoot something to sell it, or is this going straight to online?" I don't know. I think Zeke and I would love to make. We we're like we forget about this script sometimes, and like sometimes you just write yeah. things and it's taken we've, a while. Yeah, we've spiritually moved on. Like we've written two, at least two other pilots in a feature film since we wrote this script. And, uh, you know, sometimes people will come up to us and be like, guys, if I had a million dollars and I could give it to you every week, I would love an episode of Karate City for the rest of my life. I've never <laughs> forgotten it. It's, it's so deeply <laughs> embedded in my bones. It's all I've ever wanted to have a giant exoskeleton of a machine. Yes, dude, like <laughs> Iron Man, <laughs> Ursula, Ursula. That's all I want. No, is nothing like... would make me happier to fulfill that dream. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, short answer is, of course, yes, we're, yeah. we're looking to sell it and uh, find a place to make it. Yeah, uh, we, and we, we shot a very too. silly, that's what uh, Lee is referring to, like four or five years ago or so, a long time mm -hmm. ago now. But like we had six hours on this airplane set that we could shoot. And we, yeah, we YouTube Space LA, they were crazy. like, you have six hours. Yeah, and, and then uh, slowly over the years added like credits to it, which you saw like a, a riff on the credits this, <laughs> at the beginning of this, uh, which is super fun. So we shot a little thing just for the vibe. Um but like yeah. nothing, we I, I think nothing that like fully captures what we want to do. But that's pretty close. That has a great score by Jason too, which is like yeah, tremendous. Yeah, and uh, oh, it was yeah. funny that short film actually inspired the actual script. So like you know we we yeah Jared we did the film before this. Reverse, we tend to shoot <laughs> short films and then write script, like, like pilot it, script. Not even <laughs> even crazier than that was like we made that and then we were like this was so fun. What if we did a fake documentary? We wrote a whole hour long pilot about like this current living like a, a woman who's a director who's like husband broke up with her for some starlet on the tv show that she like works on and so she remembers she goes home to collect herself and finds these old vhs tapes of karate city that she loved and then the whole show was going to be like this mockumentary about this director trying to put her life back together and understand what happened to karate city which disappeared and no one ever heard from it again uh, but everybody remembers it and loves it. And we made that. And there were scenes from the actual Karate City in that right. script. And, and then everyone loved those scenes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoever read so it was like, why don't you just the make these the scenes? The, you know, I don't think, you know. And we were like, well, see, that's, wow. okay. that's why it pays to have good friends who are writers who can sit you down, be honest with you and say, how married to this script are you? <laughs> yeah, be like, seems like you really only like writing these scenes. <laughs> seems you're only really good at writing these scenes. So what do you think about a page one rewrite? And uh, I'm but really we did. glad we did. And yeah. I, it came out really fun and silly. Um, but anyway, so there's a lot of iterations. We've di this is the most backwards you could ever get to a script in the universe, probably. Yeah. So if you guys know a place for it, let it us know. Other than that, like, we just love, you know, making this. And I feel like... Whether we get to be in it, uh, all of us, or if they replace Jarrett and I with Kevin Hart and The Rock, that's fine too. That would be ideal, uh, actually. I would love that. Yeah, Nothing yeah. would make like, me happier. So yeah. it's probably better. I for you still guys get to get play Blower. That's all. I want. Really yeah, works. you will still be Blower for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think uh, people are saying yes. Karate City backgrounds. They want. They want merch. We're gonna have to make some Karate City merch, I guess. Yeah. This is fun. Uh, I'm glad people. City patches for the whole thing. I yeah, want to have an officially branded Ursula wig for sure. I want to have a front desk. We're gonna have a line of Karate City wigs. Is like the first. Yeah, thing that would be great. Karate City mustaches too. That'd be Temporary great. Temporary yeah. Blower tattoos. Oh, the Hijo oh. neck tattoo. Yeah. Yes, we're gonna start <laughs> we're gonna selling go Hijo. Actually, we're gonna sell wigs for your Funko characters, your pop characters. So you can buy whatever ones you want. Mm -hmm. You can you can change them into. Karate City uh, toys. Remember, see, great. Scott remember knows fun all of this. You, oh, remember man. Fun Dip? It's such a resource. We could make fun dip uh, hijo 
You know, so you can, you yeah. Yeah. Fun dip packets. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so we would definitely inspire on. a generation of kids to pick up Hijo. Or um, someone said, similar. "I I need to watch the original. I bet it kicks ass." Uh, which we should put the original online. Just fuck it at you this really point. Should. Yeah, yeah, I will. I will. We put it in some like um, little short festivals. It got a little bit of like some little nods actually mitch wales who uh mitch wells is mitch wales on instagram who edited it he got like an award for best editing for it we got some little things here yeah, and we there got you some, know. some little a little bit of love on the festival circuit. yeah i'll put we'll put it up play it now i put could it play it now if you guys wanted to i guess do you want to watch it i could put it uh, that could play us out we'll finish and then i will i will let that roll if anybody wants to sit and watch the original short i'll put, i'll do that um Someone also, uh, Skella wrote, uh, <laughs> whoever wrote the line, that's one way to get a guy in the sack, deserves to get paid at least $20 million in an Oscar. So <laughs> I, the only reason I'm, this is, seems self-congratulatory, but we were fixing the script yesterday because we had, we had like a bunch of versions of the script and we accidentally used the wrong one during rehearsal. And that was one line. It was really fun to read through a Zeke and be like, okay, wait, wait, on this version, it says this. <laughs> We were punching and, uh, up our own material two nights ago, just being like, wait a second, which one of these jokes actually works now? So that joke actually came, it was literally just something like, way to go, Brecker, or something stupid like that. Some wasted line. <laughs> anyway, so I'm glad you, you like that. Makes it Karate City uh, workout video, and I think that that is an absolute necessary thing. Oh, you know, okay. Karate. Yeah, for sure. We'll do a Karate get, City get workout that Karate video. City body. <laughs> Karate City, but <laughs> um, spe- yeah. Well, okay. Anyway, <laughs> um, I think that's good. Okay, so that's it. I think seven oh three. Thank you guys yep. so fucking much for doing this with us. Let me cue this up and uh, fuck it. Well, thank you guys, all, all of you. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, everybody for tuning in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hit all those people up. Oh shit! Wrong button. Okay, hold on, hold on. Here we go. I'm gonna open up this uh, this thing. VLC. Okay. In a world where guns. All right, you're going to have to watch the... Uh... Oh, that's the other thing. There's all these fake names because originally it was going to be this whole mockumentary. Whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, all, all of you in the room, by the way, because I don't have the audio separated, we do have to like mute while this plays. So I'm just going to say I love you all now. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. And I'll, I'll please leave the room and then you can restart another room or something. But I'll talk to you guys all soon. Thank you so much for doing yes, this. Yes, yes, yes. Love you guys all. Awesome. Thank you all so right, much. Bye, everybody. Love you Okay, I'll feed a saying. Okay, where am I going? Where's the screen? Here. Okay, without further ado. Yes, yes. Here you all go. Enjoy, please. Karate City, the original short. In a world where guns were never invented, crime still exists. The police officers of Karate City stand between the law-abiding citizenry and a world of crime with nothing but their fists, their feet, and each other. Karate Sit. Sounds like company has arrived. Give me tail! Down it! Save me. Karate City Police Department. Everybody remain calm! Rick Hart and Dirk Murdoch, the finest boys the Karate City Police Department has to offer. Beautiful boys finally come to work for me. Where is?
see Ursula? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm but a humble vape merchant. I don't associate myself with criminals. Your lies stink worse than your shitty vape. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but I can't feel it because I'm paralyzed. Also, they can't. I'm not dead, pat my back, mad cock. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Breathe, Kimasabe. She wants you, man. Remember, she owns the mayor. If we want to take her down, we gotta do this one by the book. By the book. Well, boys, this has been entertaining, but if you're not going to join me in a fair or if you do not have a foreign, then I guess I'm going to have to ask you to get up <laughs> There's your fucking warrant. Where is he? Ricard, stop harassing the poor woman, Grasshopper. Axel Wyland. You take a nice combat shit? I'm ready for death. Are you? I hope this would go a different way, brother. But I take a combat shit after my combat coffee every morning. So, yeah. I'm ready. Two on one, huh? Justice never fights fair. Good. Just neither do I. Ah! 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 woman said it's very brave of these men to go public and I think that once we have our first male superstar admitting that he abuses laxative, laxatives or is a compulsive exerciser, we're going to see more men coming out of the closet. decide to take a dive. What do you say? Once more under the breach, Kimo Seven. Fuck your ass up. Yeah.